welcome back to my channel. Today is an important day for me, special day. As you can tell by my mug, you know Ray Dunn has a mug for everything. Today is my four year cancerversary and I thought that today, October 17th, 2018 is the perfect day to share my story with all of you and hopefully my story will help someone maybe going through thyroid cancer or considering radioactive iodine treatment for Graves' disease or something like that. Maybe you have a friend or a family member that's going through this or, you know, maybe you're just watching it because you're one of the amazing people that support my channel and want to know more about me. And I hope if, if that's the case, I hope that it inspires you to go visit your primary care doctor. Find a primary care doctor if you don't have one. You are never too young for a primary care physician. And I was really naive. I was 26 and I didn't have a primary care doctor. I would go either to the urgent care that I worked at, I would see one of the physicians that worked there, or I would go to the Minute Clinic at CVS or Kroger. Dad, don't be like me. Don't be naive. Get a primary care doctor. Make sure that you know everything is good with your health, especially if you have any type of family history of health issues totally recommend a primary care doctor. So I'm going to take you back. I'm going to share a couple photos throughout this video. The first one is going to be this photo. This was taken in 2013 in the fall and you can see my neck like it is protruding out in this picture. This picture was my default picture on Facebook. It was shared on the photography Facebook of the person that took the photograph and it was on my cell phone. I had this picture in my house, you know, I would show it to people if they asked about my little boy, you know, I just, I, I saw this picture all the time and no one ever asked me what was wrong with my neck or pointed it out, the huge mass that you can clearly see. And it just blows my mind that I did not notice this about myself. So Make sure you're looking at all your pictures very carefully to see any abnormalities that, you know, might be going on with you. Fast forward to 2014, I was working at an urgent care that was attached with the primary care. The doctor that I was working for was also my son's um, family practice doctor. I would take him there for his well child checks because, you know, family practice sees all stages of life. We were at his four-year-old well child check. And the doctor asked me, because you know I didn't have a primary care doctor, he said, so when are you going to come see me? And I said, you know what, Dr. Z, that is so funny you say that because I have this lump in my throat whenever I'm like, I go to swallow food or anything like that. Like, it's a little weird and I'm kind of freaked out. And he said, he felt it, you know, he did like a palpation, a, he palpated my thyroid and he was like, I think I feel something, you know, you might have a goiter and large thyroid. Do you want an appointment today? And I'm like, no, 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 no. We'll do Brayden today. I'll make another appointment. And he said, don't put it off. Make sure you come in and get checked out. We'll start with blood work. He said, we can draw it today. And I'm like, no, no, Brayden's with me. I'm not doing that today. So the next morning, I got my blood work done. And I got my results back the same day, late that afternoon. Um because they were run up at the hospital that we were affiliated with. So I got my results back. They were normal, nothing was wrong. And I'm like, I guess I just have a lump in my throat. I don't know. And so Dr. Z, he was like, you know what? We're gonna send you for a thyroid ultrasound just to make sure and see you know, if it's a goiter, enlarged thyroid, let's solve the mystery. So I went and I remember going in for the ultrasound, the ultrasound tech to the left side first. And I felt like it was taking, you know, a really long time. And then she did the right side and it was so much quicker. So the next morning I got to work early and I went and saw Dr. Z and I said, hey, did you get my results back? And he said, yes, I did. And I just put in an order for you to have a fine needle biopsy because you have one fairly large mass tumor whatever you would like to call it 
on your thyroid and there's a smaller one pushing on it and making it protrude out. That's why it was getting so obvious because the picture you saw in 2013 is nothing compared to what it looked like in 2014. And I wish I would have taken more pictures, but I went to my fine needle biopsy. It was the most strange sensation I have ever felt because you're awake during it. You know, I mean, you sit in a procedure chair with radiology and they offered, they were so sweet, they were like, do you want to watch on the monitor? And I'm like, no thank you. I would rather just, you know, lay here with my eyes closed and not think about needles going into my neck. And it was so strange because they were taking samples, mostly from the left side. They did take a couple from the right, mostly from the left, but he ran out of the syringes that they were using to pull the sample. And I thought, why do they need so many? This is weird. And so, you know, the tech went and got more and gave them to the radiologist and he drew out some more samples. And the last sample he said, I'm not quite sure that you're totally numb with where I need to go. And you might feel this one a little bit. He said, you're just going to feel a lot of pressure. It may hurt a little bit. Please don't move. Be as still as you can. So I took a deep breath and I closed my eyes and just tried not to focus on it, tried not to think about it. It was pretty uncomfortable, but I mean, I didn't scream or I didn't want to like, you know, jump out of my chair or come out of my seat. It wasn't that unbearable. Uncomfortable, definitely, but, you know, he had really prepared me for what the sensation was going to feel like. And, you know, I really was kind of bothered by how many <laughs> samples they took, so I kind of knew that they were seeing something under the microscope because they did have someone there from the lab to look at each sample that he had taken. And um, it just seemed off to me. So, you know, I think it was like two, three days later maybe, I went to work and I asked Dr. Z, did you get my results back? And it was September the 26th. It was actually his birthday. So I went in the morning, I'm like, happy birthday. Um, by the way, did you get my results? And he was like, no, no, they haven't come in yet. They haven't come in yet. And I asked him, I think around like lunchtime maybe, um, if they had came back and he kept telling me no. So the end of the day comes that day and I'm closing out from doing charges, talking with one of the girls that I worked with. She was kind of like, you know, we would help make sure that there was nothing wrong with charges, you know, before we had to leave for the day. And, um, she was with me just kind of talking while I was adding up everything from that day that I put in. And Dr. Z came and he said, hey, when you get done, you need to come back here. I need to talk with you. And I'm like, oh, okay. Not thinking about my test results, which he told me he didn't get back all day, right? Because I asked like multiple times. And he was like, oh, no, no, no. So I go back there and he tells me at the nurse station, he's like, hey, you, you need to sit down. And I'm like, no, I'm fine. I can stand. I've been sitting all day. And he's like, no, you need to sit because I, I need to give you your results. And I'm like, okay. And he told me that my results were very abnormal and that he had to refer me to a surgeon because they weren't sure if it was cancerous or not. It was just kind of un unclear at that point. So I'm like, okay. So, you know, I left work. I went home. I was totally freaked out at this point. <laughs> that next Monday, I called. I made an appointment with a surgeon, and he's amazing. He actually had Graves' disease, and he had radioactive iodine treatment for that, and he shared his whole story with me. So he made me feel really at ease because, you know, not only was he a physician, but he also, he had been in, in you know, in a similar situation. So we did my surgery on October 17th, 2014. Um, he had told me before surgery he was going to just try and take the left half of my thyroid because my tumors were mostly on the left side. There was, it was kind of crossing over into the right a little bit, but he thought that it was located to one side. Not the case. They had to take the whole entire thyroid out and he was able to get some lymph nodes as well when he was in there. So when I woke up, he told me that I had cancer and um, that he sent it off to the lab to find out exactly what kind of cancer, all of that stuff. And about a week and a half or so, two weeks later, I was at work and I got a phone call and I knew it was the doctor's office and I kind of stepped into an empty patient room that wasn't being used that day. And I sat down and I answered the phone and it was my doctor, the surgeon. And he told me, hey, Melanie, um, I got your results back and you have papillary thyroid cancer. You know, we, we have an answer. It is papillary thyroid cancer. I'm going to have to make 
a referral for you to go see nuclear medicine because it's treated with radioactive iodine. Your thyroid is the only part of your body that absorbs iodine. So what they do is they make iodine radioactive and they, you take it, your body absorbs it, and then you, it, your cells are uh, nuclear ablated by the radioactivity. So I'm taking my thyroid medication because they wanted my TSH, which is the, what they measure in your blood, to check your thyroid. And a normal TSH is between 0.40 to 4.50. And they wanted my TSH to be greater than 30 so that your cells were thirsty for iodine. That way your body kind of uptakes a little bit better. And I went and would get my blood work done and they'd be like, no, no, no. I think it was about two weeks or so. And at this point, we're into November. It was right before Thanksgiving. And I was so worried that I was going to be radioactive around Thanksgiving. I was so upset about it. So I went in and I felt so awful this one day. I went to work to get my labs done early before work. And I told her at the lab tech, I said, I, I really think today's the day. I don't feel good. I looked terrible. And they drew my blood and about probably an hour, hour and a half later, I was just sick. I was so sick. I was nauseous. It was awful. And I had an amazing boss and some really good coworkers and they're like, you know what? You look like you don't feel good. I honestly looked green. I looked terrible. I had to call my mom to come get me from work because I, I physically could not drive to home. And I, I think at the time I lived only like 15, 20 minutes away from work, if that. And my mom had to come drive and pick me up because I was so sick. I could not physically drive myself. They called me later that afternoon and told me that my TSH, I want to say it was like it was really high. It was like right around like 60, I want to say. Somewhere around there. I can't really remember. Um, I'll have to find out from my, my doctor's office. But it was super high and I felt terrible. So they ordered my radioactive iodine pill for that day. Because, you know, radioactive iodine, it doesn't sit on a shelf. It is made to order. I took myself to the hospital. Still not feeling very well. But I knew, like, at that point you kind of go to somewhere where you're like, okay, I'm really sick feel terrible, but I physically cannot be in a car with anyone else because I'll be radioactive on my way home. So I got to the hospital and checked in. They made me go to this like wing of the hospital, like down this long hallway, and I really didn't see anybody. And then you sit in the, like this room and fill out paperwork, sign all kinds of waivers, you know, typical stuff. And then they're like, okay, well, we're going to go get your pill. And they come out with like with their lead suit on and they have this lead canister on a cylinder that they put it in it reminded me of something from the simpsons like i don't know it looked really weird but it was like this can it kind of looked like a beer can i mean i'm not gonna lie it kind of looked like a beer can size and they're holding it with these big metal tongs with like rubber handles and they're like all right really quick i'm gonna set this down they set it down on like the little table next to me they're like all right we're gonna step back and you just unscrew it and then it was like in a lead thing inside of something inside of something and then, then I pulled out this little bitty vial and she told me just to pop the top off take it swallow it and I was done so I did that and it was like I remember it being a pretty good sized pill like like vitamin sized and they told me they're like look before I took the pill they told me you know take it walk out of here don't stop at the gift shop don't stop anywhere go straight to wherever you're going to be recovering at which luckily was in my parents' basement. And um, they kept my son, but I stayed in one of the basement bedrooms downstairs, and he stayed like two levels up, and they said that would be safe for him. And I wasn't able to see him for like, I want to say it was about a week. I couldn't like touch him physically, which was really hard. But he could wave at me, you know, from far away. Like he could be up at the top of the steps after a couple days because you're not quite as radioactive. But they told me if I were to feel sick or nauseous, because it does make you nauseous, if I would have, you know, vomited on, on the side of the road, I would have had to have buried it, marked it, and then called to let, you know, the biohazard people come and dig it out of the ground and dispose of it because it's radioactive. 
And I basically spent days in my parents' basement. I was so thankful I didn't, you know, I was able to keep it down. And I didn't, I don't think I actually got sick until like a day and a half, two days later. And I was really, really sick and I was swollen. And I'll show you a picture of kind of how I looked. I was puffy. I was just, you know, my scar, you could still, still see my incision and everything. It was just not the best moments in my life. But luckily after, you know, like I said, after like that long weekend, I was able to go back to work, I want to say like a week later or so. And I just kind of had to keep my distance still, you know, really hard. It was a rough time in my life for sure. I went for my uptake scan because they give you a scan at the end and it kind of shows you where anywhere that is like glowing on the image is where your body uptook the iodine. So it was like a week later I went and I'll show some pictures. My mom got to stay in there with me during that because she just stayed in there to talk and everything to me while I was having it done and waited for me there because it didn't emit anything harmful for her at that at that point. So the next day was really cool because the doctor showed me like the video of it so I could see everywhere where I was glowing like in my neck and everything. It was just crazy how much uptake my body had, had taken up. Like I didn't realize I had that much cancer everywhere because I had cancer in my lymph nodes from the few lymph nodes that the doctor had taken out of my neck. Um, he was able to remove the central lymph node in my neck which was I want to say like 97 or 98 percent cancerous. And I had two other lymph nodes that were like right there that he took out. And I want to say they were all, I know they were all greater than 50% cancer. I think one of them was like 80 and one of them was like 75% cancer. But it was so scary to know that I had cancer in my lymph nodes, like just hanging out in my body before that, you know, it was just so crazy. Thankfully, after my uptake scan, I am cancer free. I take 137 micromilligrams of levothyroxine daily, and my TSH is it's pretty good. It's leveled off. Um, it took about eight months for me to get it to where it needs to be. I'm looking up right now my last lab that I had done. Um, I just went in August, and my TSH was 3.32. Which is within normal range. Um, it's kind of on the high side of normal, but it was still normal. And my T3 was also normal at 3. The range on that is 2.3 to 4.2. Mine was a 3. And my T4, which is supposed to be 0.8 to 1.8, mine was 1.5. So, everything is good within normal limits. So, I'm going to show you what my scar looks like up close. You can see it right here. Different days are different. Sometimes it is like really red. Other days you can barely tell it's there. My surgeon did a really good job. So if you have any questions, please let me know down below. You can always send me a message over on Instagram. My Instagram is linked below. And I hope that this video is helpful for someone. But I worked and where I did and I was able to get into doctors quickly and I really never had to wait on many lab results, which was really nice. I know that is not the norm for a lot of people. Um, so I'm so thankful and blessed to have had that experience. And I really feel like I was put in, you know, that position for a reason. And I'm thankful to be here. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope that it really helps someone. I hope it inspires you to go to that doctor's appointment you've been maybe putting off for whatever reason. I hope that you are inspired to go get yourself checked out to make sure that nothing is wrong. And I hope you have a great day. If there you have any questions, you can always let me know down below or over on my Instagram. I hope that you subscribe.